ever make an error on a title of a series that you checked before publishing your most popular video only to make the mistake anyway? No? Just me? Okay, good to know. Hey everyone, it's Holmes from Home Story Books, and today I'm here to do a video recommending comics if you liked She-Ra, The Princess of Power. I won't be talking about the books that are paired with or based on the show, but I do want to make recommendations that are similar. We are here for queer space fantasy comics with diverse gangs of teens, exciting adventures, and sweet domestic moments. Let's go. Let's start strong with Cosmo Nights. This one is by Hannah Templer, and the back says, For this ragtag band of space gays, liberation means beating the patriarchy at its own game. So this basically feels like She-Ra not only in plot, setting, or characters, but in a lot of other ways too. This is about Pan, a queer mechanic who frees her best friend, a princess, from an unwanted marriage and an unwanted life. Years later, Pan runs into two very attractive gladiators who, who reveal to her a life and a cause that means she could live the way she wants and burn down the patriarchy at the same time. Basically, these gladiators fight in arenas to marry princesses, except these cool lesbian gladiators then release those princesses from a life of servitude and the trappings of marriage. We love to see it. This is beautiful, it is visually stunning, the strong, saturated colours, the clean lines, the colour palette choices between scenes where all the colours complement each other really beautifully, chef's kiss. I love the characters, they're all cool and hot and I want to be them and I want to be with them. There were a few panels that actually reminded me of She-Ra in the best way. This neo-medieval space queer adventure really has the mood, the energy and the spirit of She-Ra. I am currently reading it right now, but I am eagerly awaiting volume 2. This is just such a spectacular adventure story, and I'm so glad to be reading it. The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is about Prince Sebastian and his seamstress Frances. While his parents are busy looking for a bride, Sebastian transforms into Lady Cristalia, who is a fashion icon. I picked this one because it focuses on royalty, Prince Sebastian, and dual identities. It's super cute and queer. This is a copy I got from a library book sale. It is well loved, well worn around the edges, around the binding, and it was a staff pick, so this book was circulated a lot before it retired to my bookshelves. I loved the pacing, the plot of this, the character silhouettes. Jen Wang is just brilliant with her colours. They so easily convey the mood of the scene, when to be uplifted, when to be emotional, and when to have more quiet moments with characters. The author also really has a masterful use of shadow that can be used really effectively to communicate how the character is feeling without using a lot of text so the novel doesn't feel crowded. It really is graphic storytelling. Right at the back of the novel, Jen Wang shows a part of an early draft that the characters were much older but making them teens kept the emotionality of the text the same but just made the stakes that much higher and I'd have to agree. Royalty, dual identities, queerness, love, exploration of identities, and powerful secrets. This one has a big Shira vibe. I love this one so much, and there is a definite reason it is on my shelf. Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Zhu. This is about a teen witch, Nova, and her childhood crush, Tam, who is a non binary werewolf trying to conquer a curse. They live in a town in New England against this backdrop of a witchy bookshop forest and Nova's queer guardians. We love to see it. The art is gorgeous. There's quite a lot of detail on the bookshelves in the character design and also a lot of the magic is explained or explored through the art. The colours are bright, cohesive and add a whole adorable vibe to the comic. There's so much representation in here, non-binary representation, racialized representation, queer elders, queer young people, Nova wears a hearing aid, I think there's some Jewish representation, I don't want this to be a review where I just list, list representation, like each piece of representation speaks for the writing or the pacing of the plot, but Shira can be a lot like this in that it acknowledges difference without necessarily making it a plot point. It all feels pretty effortless and modern. My main critique came with the plot. The tone of the story changes very swiftly in the latter half of the issues and it became really really serious and dark and the writing feels rushed. My wife read this comic and after we both read it, I was like, did you find the ending weird? And she was like, yes. 
but it was still wholesome and sweet and totally worth reading. Witches, queerness, impossible curses, representation, sweetness, this one reminded me of she in many ways. The Backstage is Volume 1 and 2 by James Tinian, Ryan Sig, and Walter Biamonte. I feel like I've talked about this before in relation to she but it wasn't on my list, so if it is, sorry, I'm going to talk about it again. This is a graphic novel about a young teen, Jory, who joins the backstage team at his brand new private boys' school. This motley crew of colourful queer kids shows Jory the ropes and also caution him about what lies beyond secret stage doors that he's never meant to open unless he wants to disappear into a realm of magic, monsters, and missing costume pieces. This has a real Lumberjanes feel to it. A gang of teens all getting lost on magical wild adventures while also dealing with regular teen angst and homework. The characters are all incredibly well designed, all identifiable at a glance. The the colours are bright, punchy, the art is incredibly strong and captivating and is so much fun to read. Sometimes it's a little too sickly sweet but really heartwarming. I loved volume 2 which gets more into the mystery behind why backstage is literally a cesspool of unusual happenings. I don't want to get into it because I don't want to spoil the plot at all but it was just so precious and moving and totally worth a read. Stage Dreams by Melanie Gilman. This is about Grace, a trans runaway and Flo, a Latinx outlaw set against the backdrop of the Wild West. I picked this one for a she recommendation because of the way that this 2018 she Princess of Power is a reimagining of the show from the 1980s. It is so important that we, as queer people and allies, have stories that are created that reflect our history, but also who we are and how far we've come. This is sapphic, short, sweet, and diverse. I loved, loved the art style here. I love the colours. I feel like this is done in pencil and this just has such a gorgeous effect to it. This follows Grace and Four, first adversaries who band together to crash a confederate gala. I had a couple of critiques with this one. The first one is that the shape of the comic is quite square and the size of the panels means that my eye really has to travel far in order to read the whole text. This seems like nitpicking but this kind of design can really affect someone's overall enjoyment of the comic. However, the large squares and panels really made the sweeping western landscape really beautiful and was really effective. I can see how it would be a difficult design choice to make. The other critique that I had was that it all takes place over a few days and the characters fall in love so their relationship feels rushed. At the end of the volume, the author talks about why they made the choices they made, the historical evidence for writing black characters in the Wild West or trans characters or just to give more historical context. This is volume 1 so it moves really fast. But I'm still curious and would love to check out Volume 2 if it ever exists. Vents Volume 1, 2, and 3 by C.S. Pascat, illustrated by Joanna the Mad and coloured by Juana La Fuente. This is a queer sports comic, so it might only seem tangentially related to She Ra, but hear me out. This is about Nicholas, the illegitimate son of a fencing champion who gets a coveted spot in an exclusive school and tries out for the fencing team. His roommate just so happens to be the very attractive, very accomplished Seiji Katayama, his rival. This is queer, this has great tension, slow pacing, clean lines, great colours and super fun characters. I chose this to pair with she the Princess of Power, because it really speaks to she friendship, rivalry and deeply complex relationship with Katra. I won't go into details because you should just watch the show, it's great. but. The mastery of tension reminded me of that relationship, which is one of my favorite parts of the show. The art is beautiful, like I said, but I love the movement in this comic. It's a sports comic, so the poses are really dynamic, which is good because the art needs to balance out the slow pace of the storyline. Like, I've just finished volume 3 and we've just finished the tryouts for the team. The comic takes forever, so that is my only real critique, but I love the series and can't wait to read volume 4 and love to recommend slow burn queer rivalries where I can. Moonstruck Volume 1 by Grace Ellis, Shea Beagle, and Kate Leth, as well as others. This is a super cute domestic queer comic about baristas Julie, a Latinx werewolf, Chet, a non-binary centaur, and Julie's new crush Selena, a black werewolf. This volume is all about the three of them going to a magic show and then hunting down this antagonist from this mysterious magic show. Adorable, queer, full of pastel colours and sweet friendships, 
I love Chet and was recommended to read this comic by a non-binary friend of mine who loves non-binary characters and magic. I had some issues with it and one of the issues I had with it was two, was the two main characters, Julie and Selena, seem to be in an unhealthy relationship. That said, I don't want to dismiss it because I don't want to say that the writing is bad because the relationship is bad, but I am not the only person that noticed their unhealthy relationship dynamic, so I hope the author does something in volume 2 that will acknowledge that dynamic in a way that adds to the story, adds to the complexity of the writing, and drives some character development. The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Katie O'Neill. I really wanted to recommend this, and I did in the first video, and I wanted to say that I that I loved it, but the author has had some issues with the printing quality of the graphic novel, so the publisher made the difficult decision to pull the comic and publish it next year. I still want to recommend it because I love the author and her work so much. This is about love, finding your purpose, working through grief, and little itty bitty tea dragons. This is about Grace, who is navigating her blacksmith's apprenticeship, and Minette, who receives a package from a monastery where she was previously a prophetess. I love this whole series a lot and I fully believe this will be worth the wait. The art style is stunning, the end papers of this series are some of my favorite ever and the designs of the dragons are just so beautiful. This next one is Heavy Vinyl Y2KO by Carly Ustan, Rebecca Nolte and Nina Vakueva. This is all about a feminist teen vigilante fight club set in the 90s and a record store. This is volume 2, I recommended volume 1 in my first video both because of the nostalgia factor, also because of its refreshed feminist content. This is the same team of young queer women taking on antagonists that want to sabotage digital music in some way. It's fun, it's energetic, it has a really nice pace. You get lots of side stories of all the characters that weave in and out of the greater narrative that I really appreciated. There are so many contextual references to the 90s bands, technology, clothes, films, all of that adds a really lovely flavour to the story without getting in the way of it. I loved this a lot and heartily recommend it, especially if you enjoyed she the Princess of Power. Misfit City Volume 1 by Kirsten Kiwi Smith. This is one that I debated including in this list, but I went with it and with Volume 2, which I am yet to read. Much like Heavy Vinyl Y2KO, it has a real 90s feminist grungy girl gang vibe. It is set in a particular town, famous for a TV show and nothing really happens there, except when Wilder, the main character, and her friends find Black Mary's treasure map. The eyes of the town are on them. It's dark, spooky, atmospheric, and really cool. As usual, it has some of the problems that volume 1 of a comic usually experiences. We meet a lot of the characters, the main problem is introduced, the plot picks up, and then it ends. So that's why I wanted to include Volume 2 as well. A lot of the recommendations I make for things like She-Ra, The Princess of Power, have some sort of fantasy or sci-fi element, and I wanted to stay true to that. I liked the character designs, I loved the art, it felt rem very reminiscent of older, more vintage comics I'd read growing up. I liked the story and the tone of the graphic novel, and I'm really excited to read Volume 2, which is where the story seems to really get started. I enjoy all of the characters, even if they are a little flat and two-dimensional. It still feels like a modern homage to these older mystery-solving comics I'd enjoyed in the past. On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden is the only graphic novel that's still on my list to read, and she's chunky. I've read parts of this before, but it had to go back to the library before I could finish it. This is about Mia, who is a new crew member on a ship who is trying to track down their long-lost love, who they met at boarding school. The crew members all have incredibly moving stories. There are some non-binary characters and many queer characters. The author uses these incredibly contrasting but also complementary colours to tell the story. These deep reds, blues, and peaches that are just really visually enticing to me. My only worry is that it will emotionally destroy me. Tilly Walden's work can be really heavy, and with this many pages, there's a lot of layers and a lot of characters to explore. I read her other comic, Spinning, which is a memoir, and really had to give myself time to process the emotionality of that story, the weight of it, and how it made me feel. My other minor critique is the text is super small and spidery, and it can be really hard to read. I like her as an author, but I still haven't decided our relationship as author and reader, if that makes sense. I respect her work so much, but still haven't decided how I feel about her. A friend of mine has read all of her work and loved it though, so I am encouraged and curious to try her work again. That's it. That's all for this round of recommendations. 
There will be a third set of recommendations, I think, depending on how many I think fit the feeling of She-Ra. We'll see.